The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the December 26th, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we get to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We get to go figure out what the bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But much more important than that, during this next 60 minutes, this show is all about you. That's right. I want to be able to take a look at whatever instrument it is, give you another set of eyes, ears, you know, the whole nine yards out there. So give us a call at 877-927-6648. We'll do that. If you can't call in, we've got you covered there as well. You can send me an email like Craig did here, steve at tfnn.com. Please put radio show question in the uh, subject heading, of course, in our Tiger's Den. Any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger. Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, we've got a mixed market out here. Uh, you've got most indices trading to the upside. The transports, the semis, and the Russell are down just slightly out there. Spot volatility index is uh, basically flat. It's off two pennies, trading at 12.65. The Dow up 49. The uh, S&P up 9. NASDAQ 153 points, leading the charge to the upside. Dollar-wise, Amazon 3.5% or 63 bucks. Shopify 13 or 3%. Google up 12. Universal Display up up 12. The trade desk up about $10. Uh, to the downside, it is uh, Quiagen NV down 20% or 8 bucks. Bluebird Bio off 5 bucks. Spectrum Pharmaceuticals down 5. Credit Acceptance Corp off 5. So there's some stuff to look at. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. Let's go to the first request out here. This is coming in from Craig via email. Craig writes in, let's see, Happy New Year. Well, Happy New Year to you as well. Thanks for the nice wishes. Would you take a look at AXP for the intermediate term? Uh, so let's go take a look at American Express out here. Let's take a look at our three different time frames, daily, weekly, monthly, just see where price is trading in relationship to its TAS market profile resistance. What we can see here is price is above all levels. From a monthly standpoint, if price can close above 122.12, it'll be above the top of its uh, monthly profile. So profile-wise, things look pretty good. Let's go take a look. You wanted intermediate term. Let's just take a look at the monthly time frame chart first. We'll go monthly, weekly, take a look at the daily. The monthly time frame chart here, pattern-wise, let's see what we've got coming off the 2016 bottom. So this makes wave number seven. That's letter G uh, of the uh, Chapman wave, although this is not the Chapman. This is one element of the Chapman wave tool out here. But we do see that instruments will go ahead. They can make tops and bottoms at that seventh wave or letter G. And that's exactly what's taking place in American Express on a monthly basis. If prices back above Stevie's green line at 122.43 would suggest a run back towards that high out there or higher than that. Let's go look at the weekly time frame chart, see if we can find any type of resistance out here. On American Express, the weekly time frame chart is going to show us a breakdown level. That breakdown level, courtesy of the TD setup nine count. Now, when this did bottom, so we got on a monthly basis, you got that wave number seven. Uh, then price makes a move lower, and when it stops, it does it with a TD setup nine count. Now, it was the bar following nine that qualifies, and now what's going on here, Eric, is price is trying to make a run for the breakdown level. That was 127.46, you're at 125.27. So what you're looking for, if you're looking for the long side of this trade, you want to see price close back above 127.46 on a weekly time frame. 
Just out of curiosity, what's going on in the daily chart out here for you? The daily chart for American Express shows us what? Shows us uh, not much shows us maybe an A to B equals CD pattern that would be underway. That pattern would look like this. Your A point starting down here at a uh, low in October. B point out here in November at 122.43. Pulls down into a hammer candle about a 0.618. It was a 68% retracement. Price has made that one-to-one -one move out here. Price above Stevie's green line. Um, so everything looks really pretty good. Resistance is the weekly time frame chart. That's what you're going to be watching, Craig, for your intermediate term time frame signal. I hope that that helps you out. Thanks so much for writing in. Let me know if you need anything else. Let's see if we've got any other questions here. It doesn't look like we do. So let's just take a tour of the uh, equity charts. There were some questions that came in over the weekend. Weekend. It wasn't a weekend. It was just the holidays out there. And uh, I'll answer those during the, and I put it all together in essence in one presentation for everybody out there. This will, and it will be what the, what I see in the chart patterns out there uh, to suggest that we have to be very careful about 2020 because it is looking like it, it, it could be shaping up to be a bear market. And it confused a bunch of folks out there. And well, that's good. Uh, so, uh, but we'll go through, we'll go through that. Uh, we'll touch a little bit on the, uh, the Armstrong ECM. People have written in about that. So we'll just simply cover that. But I want to do that when we don't, I can't do it in two minutes out here. But what I can do in two minutes is just take a tour of what's going on in the general markets for us. So let's begin by taking a look at the daily equity futures contracts. What do we see? Earlier in the day, the Dow was trying to form a brand new daily profile. Uh, but so far, but since then, that has vanished uh, using Stevie's Super Doppler tools out there. That's where we get those advanced uh, signals. Uh, sometimes they take hold. Sometimes they don't. At this stage here, sometimes you feel like a nut, and sometimes you don't. In this case here, we don't have a brand new profile. Things are above all the, uh, really, they're above the daily, the weekly, the monthly, and the quarterly for most of the uh, equity futures contracts. I can't really check on the Russell 2000 out here. Um, I just don't have a way to etch a stitch all of the historical data for us. But Profile-wise, nothing new out here when we take a look at the uh, equity futures contracts and their daily timeframes. We can see that the advanced decline oscillator has turned down just before that 150 uh, level out here. That won't really be a problem unless you get the advanced decline oscillator closing below zero. Right now, they're reading 94.64. And simultaneously, the spot volatility index trading above its 50-day exponential moving average. It's not doing that. That's 1364. But with regard to the spot volatility index out here, what is it doing? Well, what it is doing is while price is making a higher high inside the S&P 500, we have a rising bottoms spot volatility index. And if that pattern continues to stay, it tells us of, of an impending retracement. Now, maybe that retracement is nothing more than a two- or three-day knee-jerk reaction, or maybe it's something more than that. Uh, only time will tell. But one of the ways that you will be able to tell is where is that spot volatility index trading in relationship to that 1364 level. Right now, that's the 50-day exponential moving average. So that's what we've got going on right now in the uh, markets. We get back from this break. We'll try to answer uh, the 2020 question out there, even though it's still 2019. So stick around. Of course, I'd love to hear from you. 877-927-6640. We'll be right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, let's begin. Uh, let me. This is uh, th this little presentation, so to speak, as I take you through some different uh, charts and uh, uh, graphics uh, out here. It's really to help us understand uh, 2019. What patterns are we taking a look at? There's no question. Hey, look, it began a year ago today. Not the entire bull market, but the 2019 bull market began on December 26 of uh, 2018. By the way, uh, we went long, uh, my subscribers and I went long that morning, uh, and we were using the TD nine count tool uh, as the uh, as the uh, signature that the market was going to go ahead and it was changing trend. Not No idea that it was moving higher in through this December 26, but there's no question that 2019 has been the year of the bull worldwide. Now I say uh, worldwide. What was the timer digest slide? I'll go back here. Bill was asking a question. So, um, you know, in 2018, I was the uh, 2018 uh, timer of the year. It was number one for the S&P, number one for um, the uh, for, for bonds out there, treasury bonds, uh, uh, through December 21st, so for 2019. So through December 21st, which would be December 22nd of 2018 through December 21st of 2019, I'm still in in the number one slot. I don't know that I'll make it to the market time of the year for 2019, but really not doing too bad. It's uh, clearly this was not just a uh, one hit wonder, so to speak, out there. So, Mr. Bill, that's what that slide was about. But back to 2019, the, 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 the year of the bull. Now, we know I say it's the year of the bull worldwide, just simply if I take a look at um, the way that in major, some major instruments are trading in all currencies out here. Now, all, not all currencies. Our primary currencies are the, the U.S. dollar, the uh, the euro, the yen, and the Great British Pound out here. Now, here we can see different instruments. You can take a look at panel number three. It says ROC stands for rate of change. Now, this is a 12-month rate of change. It's not exact to the bottom tick, to exact to the top tick. But um, you can see that, in essence, the Dow through uh, Wednesday, uh, through Tuesday, was up about 22 percent. The S&P about 28 percent. That's in terms of U.S. dollars. Was up more. Both of those up more in terms of uh, euros out there. 
That was at 32%. You can see the DAX is up uh, in the last year about 25%. So the DAX has actually outperformed the S&P 500 or the Dow. I want you to, you don't hear about that. I don't think you hear about it. I don't hear about it uh, too much out there. So I want you to just note that down here. The reason why is because, you know, we've been taking a look at a marketplace where the global flow of capital is so important. And so what I want you to understand here is the big winner, winner, chicken dinner, as we take a look at this, has been light sweet crude, which is up about 30%. Followed by the DAX about 25%, but all markets have moved higher, whether it's gold, whether it's treasury bonds, um, whether it's emerging markets out here. So in the last year, you know, there's been, there hasn't been a, a true um, rush to any one specific area. Uh, and we know that just by simply taking a look at uh, this chart here. So this has been the last month. If we take a look at that bigger picture out here, that bigger picture being going back to the 2009 bottom, well, here you can see that there has been a concentration of, of uh, capital inside the U.S. stock market, with the Dow being up 428% or 529% in euros, depending on which currency. And it is important to understand which currency or how markets are trading in major currencies out here. But you can see the just huge, gigantic uh, winners since the 2009 bottom. But that has le leveled off in 2019. And that's an important aspect of what it is. Or I think it's an important aspect of what it is we are looking at here. Now, the key to understanding that global flow of capital lies in the realization that we are not alone. We cannot think only as if we're the only trader out here. We take a look at gold. Yes, we take a look at how gold or silver or, or the Dow or natural gas or light sweet crude or you name it, how it's trading in U.S. dollars. That's because that's what you and I primarily use to uh, pay for the things that we purchase. But if you're sitting over in Europe, you're using the pound or you're using the uh, euro out there. Uh, you're using the U.S. dollar as well. And so we cannot, you must always realize that we are not alone when it comes to trading and investing. You see, everything is connected. Everything is inter, is in, is, uh, so everything's connected in an intricate, dynamic, nonlinear network where the slightest change, the slightest change in one region can set in motion ripple effect of dynamic proportions around the world, which is what creates that global flow of capital. And that's why this is important. That's why, hopefully, you watch this show. This is one of those uh, great tools where we try to understand what are traders around the globe thinking of the different instruments. Is somebody a seller? Is somebody a buyer out there? Look, the bull run in gold into 2011 saw price rising in every major currency. Those are the green arrows out there. You want to be, if you're long, you want to be investing in instruments where it is rising in every major currency out there. Now, look, gold is not broken out in all major currencies. In fact, it's got a breakout failure pattern in terms of euros and Great British pounds. Yes, gold has had a nice couple of days out there. Be careful. I don't know how much I can uh, state this. Be careful out here. We don't have breakouts in gold. Going, you, look, at, look at how gold is performed in U.S. dollars versus the other currencies out here. Just simply be careful. Now, look, the positive of this is gold does not top out in other major currencies before it does in dollars. So longer term, bigger picture, down the road, uh, this is a positive. But right now, if you're looking at this chart, and I hope that you are, and you can see how gold has failed to break out in terms of euros, has failed to break out in terms of pounds out here, that you be especially careful on your trade, because this is what global traders are looking at. Now, if we take a look at this capital investment, capital is always moving from one nation or one region to another one, as well as between various sectors. So whether it's going from Europe to North America to Asia, we've already proven since 2009 it has flown to North America. We can take a look at 2019 and say it, it global capital has, has parked itself in various places out here, wh whether it's real estate or stocks or bonds. It's always moving. It's important for you and I to understand where is that global flow of capital going to. So the question will be, is 2020, will this be the continued year of the bull, or will this be the year of the bear? Look, here's the deal. The market will decide for us 
We just have to listen. We just have to watch out there. We'll see. This is the this show, TFNN, is basically all about pattern recognition traders. Yes, there's some fundamental uh, folks, I think, that come on as guests uh, from time to time. But it's really all about these chart patterns and the confidence that you do or don't have with these chart patterns. This set of charts, for example, looks at how the markets from around the globe have been performing in terms of U.S. dollars. So, yeah, there's been a bull market in 2019, meaning prices for these instruments are higher than they were uh, last year at the beginning of the year out here. But are there any breakouts going on other than in the U.S., which, by the way, is the upper left-hand panel, the upper left-hand corner? That is the Dow Diamonds out there. It is only in the U.S. where there is a breakout that's going on. Point number two to write down on your pad of paper. Remember, point number one was the U.S. was not the lead in 2019. It was the DAX in Germany, even priced in U.S. dollars. And also, what we can see here is there is no other breakout going on around the globe, folks, as we come in to 2019 into a time period where a top is made. So when we come back from this break here, we'll continue with these slides because I think this is muy importante. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're, uh, we're doing just kind of a review of 2019. Where are we at? Understanding the global markets out here, which is so important. There are two things I suggested you write down in your pad of paper. Uh, just to review those, those two things were what? Number one, uh, in 2019, the global flow of capital is not concentrated in the U.S., uh, the U.S. is performing well, but is not concentrated here. Uh, so we don't have that wind at our back, so to speak, right now. At least we don't have it clearly as of December the 26th. And we also know that, hey, look, there's really only been, even though markets have moved up in 2019 across the globe, it's only the Dow that's broken out. Everything else can be termed nothing more than a counter trend rally, has not broken out above the prior highs out there. And that's really important. I mean, this is the 2018 highs that these markets are not trading above. I can tell you from year to year, that is a definite definition of uh, either a consolidation or a bear market. When you do not trade above the trade above, forget about close above, trade above the 2018 highs out there. And that's what this this what this set of charts is telling us, folks. I don't want anybody to get too wrapped up in the euphoria out here for 2019. I want you to have a real understanding of what's going on across the globe, because then that can help you or should help you to have a better picture as to what is going on. Now, if we take a look at the Dow, the Dow formed its mid-October bottom. Mid-October bottom, that's a seasonal thing out there, actually on the 4th. And what it did, that's when the Santa Claus rally began. That's where price came down, tested the breakout level that TD set up nine count out there. So the Santa Claus rally has begun. Uh, price uh, should continue to move higher. We'll take a look at move higher through when. And since that bottom, though, but since that bottom of October, the uh, third out here, the global flow of capital has been also spread out throughout the globe. So remember, we took a look at 2019. Now we're taking a look at just simply from October, and you can see that the uh, look the Dow and the S and P are performing uh, slightly better than everything else, but not like so substantially. We're talking about a percent or so, not so substantially that you and I can make the conclusion or draw the conclusion that the global flow of capital is concentrated in the U.S. It is not, and I think that that is important for us to understand as we move into 2020 out here. So when I mentioned the um, the October bottom, typically the Dow over the last 86 years, the average date as to when it forms a bottom is mid-October, October 13th. But what we also know is over that 86-year period of time, it's January 6th where we typically see a high. Now, we just use these dates as guidelines. We know you and I have looked at 2019. We've looked at the dates for highs and lows. We know that they have each derived early out here. So uh, we need to be on guard here. But a seasonal high is due in uh, January. There's not anything that I can share with you to suggest that we don't, uh, that the markets don't make it there. But that's where we really want to be paying attention to is whenever that seasonal highs. Now, any depth of uh, any retracement, should one occur, is really going to be the key. Considering, and we looked at this chart last week, the, the weekly and the monthly and the yearly. That's right. I added yearly. We didn't have this last week. The yearly topping patterns that are, are present. When I say topping patterns on a yearly basis, what I'm looking at is TD nine counts out here. So when we take a look at the Dow, the New York Stock Exchange, Russell 2000, the Composite, the S&P, the Wilshire, they're in bars number eight this year. Bar number seven out here was as of the close of 2018. Um, we know that at bars uh, eight, nine, or the bar following nine, that's where we can take a look at topping signals out here. This uh, this this tool. This market analyzer tool that you're taking a look at here, look at all of the different longer term, intermediate term topping signals. It really should make the hair on the back of your neck begin to stand up. I shaved the back of my neck, so I don't have any hair, but it still stands up. By the way, here's the yearly chart for the Dow that we took a look at. This was as of Tuesday's uh, end of, uh, data, end of uh, day data out here. Here's my large A to B equal CD. I've shared with you that I believe that the this bull market that we're in really began back in 1975. There is a island bottom in the S&P that formed back there. That's what I'm going to use as the beginning of my A to B equals CD pattern. You can see that the Dow from that time period has made the 1 to 1.618 A to B equals CD. That was the 28,520 level, the next level to the upside, 33,726. I believe there will be a pit stop before we get there. But let's just continue to take a look at the charts, the monthly chart for the Dow. Here's where we can take a look at that Rhodes went 
symptom indicator pattern. I want you to understand that the body so far of December of that candle is relatively small, and it would be very easy in a pullback in uh, January to create some type of bearish reversal candle. And if we did get that on a monthly chart out there, that's where you and I really would need to be concerned. So we're going to let the market tell us, but we're also not going to ignore what it is that we see going on around the globe out here. On the weekly chart, you can see the TD9 count out here. Uh, that says we could see a higher high um, this week. That would be the potentially the end of it. Wave number seven is what it's also in. That can extend. You've got an A to B equals CD pattern that is underway out here. So there's a number of patterns that are in play that one would want to be concerned with when we take a look at the Dow. The daily chart for the Dow shows the A to B equals CD pattern. It also shows a, a, uh, an existing roads momentum indicator top. All of these different time frames have got these different signals. And if the month of January forms that bearish reversal candle on a monthly chart out here, well, then what we're going to be taking a look at is that's the way that the market top was formed in 2000. That's the way that was formed in 2007. That is the way that the consolidation was formed in 2015. That is the way that the 2018 bear market formed. That's the one that ended last December 26 out there. We had a 20% move. And if we get another bearish reversal candle, folks, the signal is that uh, this would be the year of the bear. That doesn't mean for the entire year. Well, I don't know what time period it would mean. One time period that it could mean, I'll just simply go back here real quickly, take a look at the seasonal. If we do get it and we don't see a bottom that forms at the end of January, when would be the next cycle time period from a monthly standpoint, or I'm sorry, on a daily standpoint, when we would likely see that next bottom? It's pretty simple. It would be October, that mid-October bottom out here. So really important to watch what's going on with regard to these patterns out here and especially when it comes to that monthly time frame chart now all these topping patterns are occurring at the same time as uh, marty armstrong's next ecm date his next ecm date that's called the economic confidence model uh, the, the date there to be watching is January 18th. I don't remember if the 18th is a weekend or not out there. So maybe it's the Friday before. Maybe it's the Monday after. Maybe it's an actual trading day. I, d I don't recall off the top of my head. Now, the ECM, if, for those of you not familiar, and I'm not going to give you the full education on here, but the you, you can do some research on your own. But basically, the economic confidence model is based upon cycles of time as well as the global flows of capital. So the way that the big cycle works with regard to ECM is a 309.6 year cycle. We're not going to live for that full time period. But if he, what Marty does, he divides it by six. It well, that generates six equal 51.6 year cycles. And then he takes that again, divides it by six, and that generates six 8.6 year cycles, which those are broken down into three additional cycle waves out there. We don't need to really go into all the details. I want you to understand the ECM is a global model. It does not track any individual market. I want to make sure that the, the emails that I received out here uh, are people are saying with certainty something is going to top and something is going to bottom out there and it, what the ease and all because of the ECM uh, model out here. And folks, if you're making that conclusion, I'm telling you with certainty, you're making the wrong conclusion. Marty will tell you that. Marty is not even certain what it is that will top or bottom and whether it will even be something in the stock market come the 18th of January. You can see some of his waves and what eventually led to a top or bottom, but he didn't necessarily know it on those dates. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. 
If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're doing kind of a review of 2019-2020. Uh, if you're just uh, checking in now, catch the archive of this. You'll be able to see all the other important uh, uh, slides and information that go along with this. But picking up from where we left off, uh, so what Marty's anticipating here inside uh, this specific ECM date is a monetary crisis. So that's what his uh, current thoughts are. And, and, and is a monetary crisis something that's important to you and I with regard to tracking instruments and the global flow? of capital? I think yes. And so reason for us to simply be on guard here as we move into that middle of January time frame out there. But again, even Marty has no certainty with regard to an ECM date, whether it's going to be a monetary crisis or it's going to be something else out there. And you don't know that day. So you just have to pay attention, watch chart patterns out there and so on and so forth. But, you know, under the terms of uh, uh, but when we take a look at monetary crisis, he even goes into one step uh, further. He's got this uh, big repo report that's out there. I haven't read it, so I don't know what's contained in there. But when we take a look at repo, I'm referring to with the terms of a repurchase agreement here. This is the easiest um, ability to, I think, understand what that really is all about. When I say what it's all about, it's nothing more than than banks agreeing to buy securities. Um, you know, from some other bank or dealer, and then eventually they resell those securities back to that uh, same seller for, uh, you know, at a specific time and for a specific price. That specific price means it includes interest out there. And so if the lender, if you're a lender out there and you're concerned, you're doing some short-term lending, long-term lending, it doesn't matter what's it all about. It's all about the collateral out there. And if you're uncomfortable with the collateral, so for example, if you're a bank, and uh, Deutsche Bank approaches you because they need overnight funding out there because it's simply how the banks operate. Um, uh, how are you going to feel about taking their collateral versus, say, the collateral from um, Bank of America or someone else out there, right? So, you know, collateral uh, collateral is a is can be a problem. And it's the reason why the and what's happened is these lenders uh, have uh, are, are getting they're uncertain about the collateral that these other banks have and is the reason why some of these primary dealers have um, they're being very careful out there and it's the reason the Fed has moved in. Look, if you really want to understand uh, the mapping of uh, the repo market and U.S. dollar fund 
funding flows out there, this is about the best uh, slide that I've been able to uh, depict or come up with out here, uh, but for good reason, we will not go through all of this. The important thing is just simply to understand that the uh, global economy, uh, that uh, global flow of market uh, means we cannot think in terms of one. We cannot think only in terms of us and how our instruments are trading in U.S. dollars. If we do that, we're never going to really be able to figure out this game because everything is connected in this intricate, dynamic, nonlinear version of a network out there where even the slightest change in one region can set in motion a ripple effect of dynamic proportions around the world. That, folks, is the global flow of capital. So will 2020 be the bear market? Will it be a bull market? It's really simple. Most important thing for us to do is to trade what we see. Okay, oh, Larry, one more dollar there. Meaning we wait for the markets to generate their next signal, and then we take action out there. But there's enough information here to suggest to you and I that we need to be especially careful right now as we approach 2018. All right, so let's go to our caller that's been on the line for just much too long out here. Let me see here. Let me get back. That was Rich in Oregon. Rich, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Good, Steve. Thanks for taking my call. And thanks my pleasure. For, uh, uh, it was good listening to about your, uh, your forecasts and what to look for. Good, good, good. Well, thanks for doing that. I appreciate it. Now let's take a look at something more important for you. I believe it is ticker symbol MUR. Is that what we're looking at? Correct. Uh, based on everything that you read and hear about the oil market, the energy market, there's the world is awash in oil, yet I've seen this particular stock and some others creeping up. And I'm wondering, is there any life in this one other than just a short-term trade? Like, so, you know, yeah, so, so Murphy Oil, sure. So Murphy Oil, as we take a look at how it's trading in relationship to support, or resistance. It's above resistance on the daily, above resistance on the weekly. Trading inside the uh, monthly profile out there, resistance would be 29.72. You're trading at 26.70. So the very first thing that you and I can do with this set of charts is mark down on a pad of paper one potential target is 29.72. That would be the top of the monthly profile. This is a bullish structured profile. Uh, nothing right now in the charts to suggest to you or I that price won't get there. From, and, and with that, you can make your decision reward risk if that's something worth uh, jumping into. Now, should you jump into it right at this very moment? Well, if we look at the daily time frame chart, what we know out here is this formed a Rhodes Momentum Indicator bottom. It did that on the trading day of August 28th. It did that when it generated that bull sash candle. Since then, we've got an A to B pattern, A to B equals CD pattern. That has unfolded. If we take a look at that, I'm probably not going to get this just exact out here, but it'll be close enough um, if I can get this all to uh, participate. And so the one-to-one -one level, in essence, is where we're trading at right now or the high of today. So it's completed a one-to-one. -one. Now, that does not mean that uh, price will not extend itself rich to the next level, which would be the 1.272 area, and that would take you up to 29.15. That is in Murphy Oil. But price is also rising doing less relative energy out here. So this would say to me to be cautious because if we do get a bearish reversal candle out here, that would suggest price would pull back either 26.72, 25.92. If price got to 25.17, that would be your buy area. But if it got below that, then you're looking at 23.67. So that's what the daily time frame chart is suggesting. So right now what we know, the monthly says, yeah, this should go higher. The daily is saying not so fast. Just simply be careful. And let's just take a look at the weekly time frame out here for you on Murphy Oil. Uh, the weekly time frame would say that uh, price could make its way up to 31.13. Uh, so uh, those are your target levels between the weekly and the monthly. Uh, I think you just need to be cautious at the moment to try to enter this thing to catch the rest of that move. But that's what that's what I see in the charts. What say you? Okay. Well, uh, like I said, I, it, it's difficult to even decide to buy any oil stock when the news is always saying there's oil everywhere. And you just wonder, why are these stocks like a Murphy Oil rising in the last, you know, few weeks? Well, so one thing off, that... And that's why you think, well, maybe I could jump in on one of these for a short-term trade. Yeah, 
So, um, but the look in the last is what's scaring me. <laughs> right. So here's here's what I want you to here's what I want you to. You're you're asking kind of a fundamental question, which is great, and and it is as if I somehow paid you to call in to ask that question, as a lead into what I'm about to say next, and 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 we didn't do that, folks. But here's the difference between um, something fundamental, what you're discussing, versus where it has been the global flow of capital for the last 10 weeks out here. And that happens to be one of the tools that we're taking a look at here. This takes a look at all kinds of instruments. And here's what we know, Rich. Lightsweet Crude has been the big winner, winner, chicken dinner, up 14.6%, yeah. twice that of the Dow and the S&P 500. So the global flow of capital has been moving into that area, and that's all that we really need to know. All right, my friend? Okay. Thank you, you very bet. much, Steve. Happy New Year. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back, folks. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of living a primal lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. So about three instruments to get through for our listeners out here. The first one is on natural gas. Uh, this is from Alex. Alex has noticed that natural gas is trading higher today. The question is, is this a change in trend out here? Here's what we know. We take a look at the natural gas. First, price is running into Stevie's red line. You'd like to see two closes above that. That's at 226. You're at 227 right now. If price does not close above that for two days, then no change in trend whatsoever. There is an A to B equal CD to the downside. This is the second confirmation or potential potential second confirmation of that pattern uh, because of the bull sash candle out here. Alex, I'd really like to see a second close above Stevie's red line. And then your price target 
would be the bottom of its daily profile. Uh, it would be $2.40. Won't tell us if there's a change in trend. That's just simply where resistance is. And if price can uh, clear Stevie's red line, that is where I would anticipate price would target. Inside the Tiger's Den, we had two questions. One was about Telefonica SA. It is in an A to B equal CD to the downside. The initial price target of 694, that's your one to one A to B equal CD. That doesn't mean that price can't move lower than that. Price is below the daily profile. It's in between the weekly profile between 727 and 7 and 669. And price is trading below the monthly profile out there. I would say uh, this looks like it wants to head lower. Let's wait for some kind of solid bottom pattern out there. We don't have that on the uh, daily. We don't have that on the weekly. Today looks like it may be bar number seven of a TD nine count. 663 is another level where price might head to. That is the next breakout area. And then the last question was to take a look at uh, coffee. I believe if we take a look at uh, coffee, that is uh, which uh, you've got the uh, March contract out here. So let's go take a look at it. And the question is, do we see any support? The daily support for coffee, now that price is back inside its daily profile, John, would be either 124.70 or 122.75. That's a bullish structured box out there. Uh, those would be the levels of support that I would be watching for the March 2020 coffee futures contract. Folks, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for putting up with my blabbering about 2020 and what we might be looking forward to. Stay tuned couple more great hours coming up. Hey, tomorrow morning, join me at 8 o'clock. I'll do record tomorrow's show between 8 and 9. Have a terrific Thursday, folks.